right, y'all. So this is Saber. Um, we planned for like a guest, like hard light shoot, but a monsoon rolled through. So we changed up our location ideas and uh, we just went with the flow. So we didn't exactly have the right outfits for what we were shooting, but uh, we shot it anyways. And uh, yeah, they look kind of basic, but you can see we're out in here in all these weeds. The eye autofocus pretty much can like track her eye through all of this. Like I'm back here like this and it can find her eye. It's pretty cool. So you can see it pretty much found her eye even through all those weeds. I was pretty impressed with that. With the Sony, it would kind of hunt a little bit. And then here I'm just having her scoot over real quick. But uh, this is 70 200 and I'm shooting at F8. Put that knee up. Yeah, there you go. Roll that shoulder back if possible. Yep. So again, everyone thinks that they need fast lenses, but uh, if you're shooting stuff like this, if you shoot too fast, you're gonna lose the whole story and the whole point, uh, the whole background and the whole scene and the whole vibe and the atmosphere of the shot. Shoulders towards me. So Take again, down. these shots right here, if they were more bulked out, you wouldn't have been able to see the flag or the cows or anything like that. So now we just move locations and uh, there's a lot of cars zooming past and honking and peeling out from the model, but uh, you see, I'm trying to experiment a little bit with my edits. These Canon files, you can really push them, even the DNG ones. But yeah, nothing too crazy here, just like my typical kind of stuff I shoot. And again, it was kind of cloudy, so I was going to use lighting, but we didn't really need it. So with edits, you kind of dodge and burn and make the skin pop a little bit more. So right here, I'm just kind of directing her how I want her to jump. But this is one of the best parts about mirrorless cameras is to get these shots before, you would have to focus and recompose or try to get the focus uh, beforehand and hope that she lands on the same point. With mirrorless, especially the R5, you just put on the eye and it just tracks it. And the model can like move help wherever fast they want, really. Removing that whole focusing and not having to worry about it really helps you to focus on composition and lighting and styling and directing. All right, so we got invited into this random place and uh, the light's really bad, but I'm shooting at 1 30th of a second. 2.8 ISO 800 or 8,000. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's pretty fucking clean and sharp. So shout out to the R5. The DNG files in Capture One, I was getting a lot of like really mushy noise. Thought maybe the Canon R5's low light was horrible, but then I went and opened it up in Lightroom, which Lightroom now supports the CR3 files and it was way cleaner. So uh, hopefully Capture One gives us uh, support super quick because that's getting kind of annoying. So these edits were done in Lightroom. Uh, the ones I had done in Capture One, I like how they look better, but uh, these will have to do for now. But the rest of the photos were all edited in Capture One. Uh, Lightroom does have support for these files now, but uh, I just prefer Capture One. All right, y'all, so this is like two days later. My hair looks crazy, I'm looking scruffy. So this is about the fourth shoot I've done with the Canon R5, and I love it. The only thing I really got to complain about is uh, the our uh, file handling situation. So Lightroom now has CR3 support, um, which is awesome, and now the files work directly in there. You don't have to do DNG conversions, but more of a Capture One user, so I prefer to use Capture One. And as you guys saw there, there was some issue with the DNG conversion and Capture One's noise reduction. So having to open a Lightroom, again, you could get similar looks, but Capture One just generally comes out way cleaner and uh, you could push it way further in Capture One without it falling apart. Capture One's noise reduction is actually way better than Lightroom's. So the fact that Lightroom uh, looks so good with noise, barely any noise reduction at 8,000 ISO. Uh, I'm assuming you could probably shoot at like 10,000, 10,200 ISO, and in Capture One, it's gonna look amazing. I also remember when I was shooting with the Sony A7R4 that uh, anytime I shot in higher ISOs, the colors kind of fell apart pretty quick, especially when you go and edit it, it would kind of all, uh, you get some kind of banding in there, and just you would just kind of lose color accuracy, and uh, you wouldn't be able to push it as far. So the Canon already, even with this little mishap with the DNG conversions, uh, the colors are still handling a lot better. The other issue I had the Sony was eye tracking with cowboy hats. So I shoot with mainly cowboy hats. So pretty much every shoot, I should probably stop doing it so much. The Sony would always hunt for the eyes. Always it would have to have the model push the cowboy hat a little bit. Well, the Canon, it kind of could find the eye underneath that. So 
uh, that's helping a lot. And you guys saw through all those weeds and everything, uh, it could still find an eye through that and track it. So overall, I'm loving this camera. I got zero problems with it right now. It's just, again, those file handling things. So video wise, overheating all that, that's a whole different thing. Again, I use a cinema camera for all my video work. And uh, yeah, so it doesn't really matter to me right now. But yeah, guys, uh, I need to go eat and uh, I need to go clean up. I'm looking, I'm just looking real. Oof. All right, y'all. Peace.